Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. In the morning sortie, we patrolled around a kill box that was given to us and destroyed Russian tanks on the ground. No ceasefire has been signed yet though, so let's see what they have us do for our afternoon sortie. Most of the Russian army appears to be in full retreat. No truce has been called, so we're gonna suck it to Ivan till he's begging us to stop. I'm assigning you a new kill box to patrol. Any and all Russian vehicles are fair targets. Go to it. Excuse me. Alright, kill box. Use this ISNR CVN 69. Date, June 3rd. Local time, 1800 hours. Weather, clear. Situation, Russian tanks are pulling out and clogging the motorways. No formal truce has been established, so all targets are fair game. Mission objective, patrol your sector and destroy vehicles with impunity. Order of battle, recommended aircraft F-22N, recommended weapons AGM-84E. Threat suppression data, ground opposition probable 2S6s, ZSU-57s, air opposition unknown. No change in the strategic view, but we're, uh, we're patrolling closer to Kiev this time. Looks like they're running off this highway trying to retreat back into Russia. See a lot of T-80s there, we have one expert wingman. So this should be a pretty simple mission, all things considered. So we can actually go mostly with the standard loadout. I just want to clear pot on there. And a uh, clear day now. So we shouldn't have the uh, same problems as the morning sortie. And we see A-10s coming in. We do have a flanker in the air. Uh, one of the last veterans probably trying to cover the uh, retreat of their, of their ground forces, so... We'll go and engage him. And our missile missed, unfortunately. Alright, we hit him, but not hard enough. Whew, this guy's good. Sorry, Wingman. This one's mine. Now, there is another bandit in our RWR that we're picking up, though. You can take that one. There we go. We'll trail our wingman, so that way, since he's probably got more chaff left than us. And we're gonna go low. So that way, that missile, once he starts launching at us, the missile will have a lot of ground clutter to deal with. Hopefully that'll distract them from us. Alright, he's going evasive. And our wingman got him. Perfect. 
So let's go back to the uh, start of our sweep. Uh, we can see the uh, the U.S. line here. Uh, some these must be the poles and the uh, free Ukrainian army. And here we see the scattered Russian forces in retreat. So. No word on where our targets are, though. Contact. Sam, you're 12 o'clock. 7 miles. Please advise. Attack tank. Attack tank. All right, it looks like this highway is what they have us uh, running on. We're going to gra grab some altitude, so that way we don't get hit by all the AAA that's still got in the area. You see the J-Stars up there. Fortunately, their ground link is working this time, so we got some good targeting data. I'm taking a shot. And let's uh we'll wait until we're within five miles and then uh Sam Watch, Sam Watch, Sam Watch, Sam Watch. It'll be open season. Sam Watch, Sam Watch. I think a Sam may have been launched at my wingman. Sam Watch. Maybe two. Sam Watch, Sam Watch. Sam Watch, Sam Watch. Very easy mission. We didn't even take damage that time. So we'll let the A-10s continue their patrol of their sector. And we're going to get out of here. We do see uh, enemy radar pings. They're staying about 25 miles behind us for now. So I'm not going to worry too much about them. It doesn't look like they're pursuing us, and we're gaining distance, so. <coughs> so, that was a quick and easy one. And I have what I believe should be my last uh, weapon overview, overview here. The AGM-65 Maverick. Tactical air-to-ground missile made by Hughes from 19... Or, and was developed in uh, night between 1966 and 1972, and entered service with the United States Air Force in 1972. It's the most widely produced precision-guided missile in the Western world. Uh, it shares the same general airframe as the AIM-4 Falcon and the AIM-54 Phoenix. Uh, 1965, the United States Air Force started a program to replace the AGM-12 Bopa. In, with the bullpup, the launching aircraft had to fly straight while guiding the weapon, and it had a small warhead. So it was ineffective against targets, and it left the launching aircraft vulnerable if they wanted to guide it. So in 1968, Hughes was awarded a contract to develop the Maverick over Rockwell with an option for up to 17,000 missiles. Early results were good, but planners predicted problems in the hazy parts of Europe. So the AGM-65B was developed, and in total, 35,000 A and B Mavericks were made before production ended in 1978. The AGM-65C shifted to development in 1978 by Rockwell, or shifted to started development in 1978 by Rockwell, and entered service with the United States Marine Corps eventually as the AGM-65E. Now, whereas the A had an electrical optical guidance system, the B model had a TV guidance system, I believe. Um, the C model, 
in the E model were laser guided, so they needed a laser designator to uh, to point them in the right direction. Now, it, the AGM 65D started development in 1977 with deliveries to the Air Force starting in October of 1983, and it used an imaging infrared seeker. I believe that's what the game. Or, no, that's close to what the game has us using, I think, but not quite. Come on. Although it, it is worth noticing, noting that I think for the most part the Navy used only between the Navy and the Marines they only used the F and uh, E variants, at least in this time period. The uh, AGM 65F combines the D Seeker and the E warhead and propulsion systems and was used by the United States Navy uh, with its first launch from a P 3 in 1989. And that model was optimized for naval strike missions. The, and then Hughes made the AGM 65G, which has the D guidance, a shape charge warhead, and software improvements. Lower two miles. Steady. We are on the ball. Lower. Oh. And we have a good landing. Third wire, ladies and gentlemen. Or the second wire. Yeah. So we'll go park that. Now the most modern version of the Maverick is the AGM-65 H and K. Now the H takes the B Maverick and uses a charge coupled device seeker for improved performance in desert environments. And the J is the designation for F Mavericks modified to be H Mavericks. And then you have the K which uses the AGM-65G but with an electro-optical guidance system. Now the Maverick uses modular construction which is what allows the warhead propulsion guidance areas to be mixed and matched as you can see that it happens very often to make new variants. And the Maverick is queued to the target by the pilot or weapon system officer before launch, after which it is fire and forget with the exception of the laser guided variants, in which case you still need an active uh, laser designator on the target. The, there are two types of warheads. They have the contact fuse and a heavy weight warhead with a delayed action fuse for penetration against hard targets. Uh, its first service was in uh, August the 30th, 1972, with uh, F4D and E units from the Air Force as well as the A7s, and it was used in the Vietnam War as well as extensively used by Israel during the Yom Kippur War. In June 1975, Iranian F-4s used Mavericks against Iraqi tanks, and again in 1980, during Operation Pier, Iran Iranian F-4s used Mavericks to destroy Iraqi OSA and P-6 boats. Iran eventually ended up equipping its AH-1Js with Mavericks, which and they used them to great effect in Operation Undeniable Victory. 5,000 Mavericks were used in Operation Desert Storm, and another 918 were used during the 2003 Iraq War. 28th of March in 2011, the United States Navy P-3C used the Maverick against the, Lib the Libyan ship Victoria. This was during, I believe, during or just prior to Operation Odyssey Dawn, which was the NATO intervention in Libya. And then, um, I think we used the G Maverick, but in reality we would probably use the E or F Mavericks. And that's all on the Maverick that I have, so we'll just wait for our wingman to land, and then uh, we're done with this mission. Alright. 
Debrief, USS Eisenhower CVN-69. Date, June 3rd, Mission Kill Box. Resolution, success. You cleaned up those ground targets despite some desperate resistance from the bad guys. Oh. I suppose those last two flankers do count as desperate resistance. Mission outcome success, we destroyed the nine targets. Elapsed time, 43 minutes. Uh, we were alive with 100% landing grade and no damage. Our wingman's alive, he took 34% damage and a 46% landing grade. We each got a flanker kill. We destroyed two SAMs and five tanks. Our wingman destroyed two triple A's. Russian troops continue to fall back as coalition units advance to the outskirts of Kiev. The Kremlin remains ominously silent on the possibility of a general ceasefire, causing increased worry that the Russians may be planning to use tactical nuclear warheads. Man, I hate to even hear the word nuclear. You're telling me. There's no countermeasure for a nuke. You get caught in one of those and you're a poodle in a microwave. Or all of a sudden your electronics get fried and suddenly you're in a fundamentally unstable aircraft. Then it's only seconds before you're tied for the world's lowest altitude record. Alright, that would be, uh... I don't know how the game managed to get two soundtracks playing at once. That's a little... odd. But, uh... That's it for today's sorties, so hopefully in our next mission we don't see him using any nukes. And with that, that ends today, so we'll see you tomorrow.